glory. How many knows we serve a resurrected Savior? Hallelujah. Lift your hands and pray with me all over this place now. Father, we so love you. We give you praise and glory. Not even for what all you are doing and what you can't do, but God, we give you praise for who you are, Lord. The Spirit of God passes between every pew here tonight, Lord. I pray just stretch your hand out and meet every need, every infirmity, every discouragement, every trial, every affliction. Knowing that we'll go through the trial, Lord, and the afflictions at times called life. And Peter said they're more precious than gold tried in the fire. But Lord, we come through them as a victor. Not of our merits. Not of our intellect or not even who we are, Lord. We come through them because we believe and we hold on to you, the promises of the Most High God. And by faith, Lord, we walk this thing out day by day. By day, and when the night seemed to never end, we know in faith and we know in confidence that you will never leave us nor forsake us. You will be with us to the end of the earth.
some of Brother Troy Romex youth with us here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Quick reminder, Sunday morning, there'll be some gathering about 6 o'clock here. Going to cook some Easter breakfast and put it in the warmers. And at 8 o'clock, we're going to come in here and just let the Lord do what the Lord does. Right. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. What time are we going to eat? That would be totally up to the removing of the Lord. Amen. And I tell you, if you don't get if you don't feed your spiritual man in here first, right. you ain't gonna enjoy that physical That's meal. Right. Right. Amen. Jesus. Glory to God. Put your fingers on Psalms 46 tonight. Psalms 46 and 2 Kings chapter 5. Been praying for a week now. The Lord would tell us anything different than He wanted to tell us a week ago, and He said, No. Stay right here where we're at then. Simply the difference between thinking and knowing. Some people thought they knew, and they realized it was only thinking. Glory to God. But how many knows there's an assertion, there's an assurity tonight? I don't, I don't sing, we don't sing these songs of worship God just hoping we make it to heaven. Amen. Can I tell you, you, you can know that you can make it if you put your whole confidence and trust in Him. Amen. Amen. Now don't, don't get too confident and don't get no confidence in the flesh. But there is a promise and an assurance that if we would love the Lord and and let me tell you, you ain't truly loving the Lord if, you, if you're not willing to give your whole life to Him. Amen. 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 There is no consolation price. We give ourselves totally, unconditionally, daily to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Second Kings chapter 5, I'm not going to read the whole thing. We'll fill in the blanks after a while. But you've heard of Laman. Naaman. Naaman was a, was a captain of a host of, of Israel's enemy at, at the time. And uh, uh, he had leprosy. And there was a little maid. When they carted some of Israel back off to, to Syria, there was a little maid, a little Israelite maid that waited on Naaman's wife as a servant girl. And Naaman would come in from the battlefield or take his armor off and, and the leprosy was revealed and uh, they were talking and they tried doctors and they tried counselors and they tried it all, all kinds of medicines. But nothing helped. And the little, the little free girl, because she knew the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. She said, don't you know that there's a prophet in Israel and I wish the master could, he could be healed. Now Naaman was a very prideful man. And so he takes, he gets a letter, delivers a letter to the king of Israel, which was a wicked man and he couldn't help him. But the prophet said, send him to me and now, now think about this for just a minute. Naaman is very prideful. He, he's, he's, he's used to getting his way. He's used to having people honor him and bow down to him, brag on him and pat him on the back. But when he gets over there in God's house, come on somebody, he's just another average Joe. Come on. Because God ain't no respecter of persons. Glory to God. And we find out that, uh, that the Word of God says that Naaman is going to go and Elisha 
This is Naaman talking. Elisha's going to strike his hand and make a big hoodoo and pronounce a cleansing on him and heal him. And he's all revved up for that. But listen, verse 8 of chapter 5, And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, uh, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Uh, let Naaman, or let him, come now to me, and he shall know, someone say that, know, no. no. that there is a prophet in Israel. Right. Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and they stood at the door of the house of Elisha and Elisha sent a messenger to him saying go and wash in Jordan seven times that's a pride buster mm -hmm. and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean but the prideful man Naaman was mad he was wroth and went away and said behold I thought. I'm talking tonight between the difference of thinking and knowing. Yes, sir. I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord as God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Glory. We'll fill it in after a while. Say, don't rush him. No, you ain't going to say that tonight. God. Psalms 46, verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried unto the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. And I said all that to get to verse 10. Be still and, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. One more time in verse 10. Be still and know. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit in this place tonight. Have your way, Lord. Speak to our hearts now tonight, oh God. If there's any uncertainties within us, Lord, even one. Lord, stretch your hand out. And let our congregation know that through you, all things are possible. We love you, praise you, thank you now. We ask this and pray this in Jesus' wonderful name. Why don't the church shout amen? Amen. amen. Glory to God. The difference between thinking and knowing. Every man's got theology. Every person, it don't matter if they if they the the biggest heathen or what the church would call a saint. Everybody believes something. Oh, yeah. Even the atheist believes something. Yeah. But how many of you could just venture back just a little bit, not in your days of reveling, but just in your mistakes in life? Anybody? Yes, sir. Well, you're going to be that kind of crowd tonight. Glory to God. I ain't going to admit to nothing tonight. Amen. But that's all right. Because we've all been there and done that. We've all thought some things that didn't come out in the wash. Come on. We've all said we knew some stuff but realized we didn't know anything. But one day we fell down to the feet of the Lord and repented of our sins. And the Lord washed us. Why? 
mighty scope. Now, glory to God, our theology, our thinking, our thoughts, amen, don't have to be all centered anymore because we can come to a place with our relation to the Lord that I know. Come on, somebody. I know that he is God. Amen. I know he is the resurrection and the life. See, this place we're speaking of could be a fork in the road, a bend in the creek. It could be an overflowing river or a high on a mountaintop or in the lowest valley. Wherever it is, it's the place where uncertainty, where uncertainty becomes certain, speculation becomes fact, and unsureness becomes sure. I'm talking about to know tonight. Oh, this place yeah. is the breeding ground of faith and the birthing place of revelation. Oh, this place is the place where truth uh, is separated from lies uh, and humanistic feelings from substance. Uh, it is a place that every born again believer uh, will not only come to, uh, but this is the place uh, that will ultimately decide their eternal future. I'm talking about, I don't think, I hope, oh, I know that the Lord so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he made a proclamation that if he could find some believers that sold to give their life to Jesus, there's an assurity for that next life. Our whole success, and I'm not going to forget about Naaman, but we'll get to him in a little bit. Our whole success in knowing is the simple rule of following. Amen. Jesus walked by these disciples and said, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. He made them disciples, fishers of men. Where they, where they listen, in their worst day, and, and, and at times they, their miserable failure, they still knew that he was God. Oh, yeah. Come on. They still knew that he was the Savior yeah. of the world. Were they perfect? Absolutely not. Not one of us here. Because there's nothing still good in us except Jesus Christ. Except the Spirit of the Lord, friend. Uh, there's nothing good in you and I. But when we, when we can identify, amen, of who he is and who he wants to be in you and I. I said, Hosea 6 and 3, the Word of God says, Then shall we know. If we follow on to know the Lord. Right. See, you don't know nothing. We don't know nothing outside of the Lord. Man, I want to tell you, I, I hear about men losing their minds. Come on. Yeah. I, I, I want to tell you, I listen, Nebuchadnezzar wouldn't bow down. I said he was prideful. But the Lord said, I'm going to humble that man. And the next thing you know, Nebuchadnezzar was out there on his hands and knees crawling around eating grass with the oxen and the dews on his back. His fingernails got like eagle talons and his hair grew to no telling how long. But one day, Nebuchadnezzar called upon the name of the Lord and God healed him. I want to tell you, Hezekiah had a visit from the old prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah went in there to that king's chamber and said, King, God told me to tell you that you get your house in order for tomorrow you die my God. And the Bible said Hezekiah didn't wait. Hezekiah did not counsel with nobody. Hezekiah didn't ask 15 people. He turned his face to the wall and began to cry out to a sovereign God. And before the prophet got away from the outer court, the Holy To your lie. Don't tell me God's not waiting on our response. And that's that, that's a that's a, a troubling comment when we always wait on the Lord. No, most of the time God's waiting on us. Come on. I've always said I believe this. 
I know it to be true. Yeah. If we'll do our part, Amen. God will do His part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And don't mix that up with works. You're saved by grace, not by works. They see right. 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 But we'll we'll throw that cop out out. I'm just waiting on the Lord. I'm just waiting on. No, the Lord's waiting on you and I. Come on, brother. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We gotta get all in. Because if you don't get all in, eventually you will get all out. Oh yeah. Listen, and to follow Jesus. I said our whole our whole success is knowing in, in the simple rule of following. And to follow Jesus is to be led to the place we're talking tonight called to know. It's got to be more than just theology. There's lots of theology out there. And it's demonically wrong. Glory to God. But there is a right. I told somebody the other day, I said, quit looking at all the wrong. Before there was wrong, there was a right. Oh, yeah. There was a Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen now. Oh, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 and 2, this is what he wrote. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech. Boy, I'm glad of that. Right. <laughs> Come on. Or of wisdom declared unto you the testimony of God. Uh -huh. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Come on, Let me tell you, that fancy hierarchy preaching don't do nothing for me. No, no, no. I, want a, I want a man to get down and, 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 and tell me if I've got sin in my life, I want him to tell me that little undiscovered, uh, unintentional, come on, something that I've done or said, I want the Word of God to find me. Uh, ten out of ten. I, I want to go home knowing I've met with God. Uh, hallelujah. What I'm simply saying tonight, I ain't got no time for no golden chair and a hierarchy and an entourage and all these things. Uh, I'm just this country, uh, hallelujah, not against the city. Uh, but what I'm saying, uh, I just want to be fed by the Spirit of God, uh, by the Word of God. Uh, because the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. I want that Word to find me. Yeah. Because if the Word don't find us, we're not responsible. But the Holy Ghost finds us, now He puts it in our lap. No time to play. It's time to pray. Yeah. Listen, Philippians chapter 3, Paul writes in verses 8 through 11 with, the, with this question, are we willing to know Him? I didn't say, are we willing to come to church? Come on. Yeah. I didn't say, are you willing to just sign a membership role? Uh -huh. Are you willing to know Him? Because yeah. He wants to know you. Yeah. And He knows you already. On, Paul said in verse 8 of Philippians 3, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but the loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, right. and do count them but dung, right. that I may win Christ, yeah. and be found in Him, uh -huh. not having mine own righteousness, right. which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. You ready for Resurrected Sunday? You want to know Him in the power of His resurrection? But watch this. And the fellowship of His suffering be being made conformable unto His death. And this is the way he finishes this. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection right. of the dead. Meaning this, if I'm going to get raptured out of here, glory to God, I got to die. <laughs> I got to die. Come on. Uh, Christ died. He suffered. He died. He was buried. He rose early on the third day uh, uh, for, for the benefit of you and I. Uh, but if we don't die, uh, I want to tell you we'll never live eternal. Uh, I said if you don't die, to your well, I want to tell you education is a wonderful thing, uh, but it could be a, it, it could be an accreditating thing too if you got a little bit too much uh, ha hallelujah head knowledge uh, without heart knowledge. Uh, it'll damn you and doom you. Uh, but then I tell you, uh, Mr. Einstein uh, or the dumbest man that ever walked the planet Earth, uh, there still ain't but one Savior and one way uh, to get to heaven. Hallelujah. Why? 
God may know it. Yeah. Know it. Man. Know it. Sometimes it takes a, a while to understand and to realize you're at that place yeah. called to know. Yeah. Yes, Can you imagine in Acts chapter 12 when Peter was bound in that prison cell? That, that enemy, that devil done, done killed James with the sword. It ple Listen, it pleased the Jews, the religion. That they, so Herod said, I'm going to kill Peter too. And they had him bound in that prison. Verse number 9 of chapter 12 of Acts, if you're taking notes, all of a sudden, they're all asleep. Peter said, hey, what's he used to worry about it all night? I'm giving to God. Come on. So he fell asleep. He did, all he was doing was imitating what he already saw Jesus done in the back of that boat that night. Everybody else is fretting and panicking and taking nerve pills and depression medicine and all the come on somebody my god ulcers is creeping up up in their guts uh, how their, their throat's done swole shut they can't swallow their head feels like a hammer's done hit them uh, uh, umpteen times uh, and jesus is asleep in the back of the boat glory to god i said they were the disciples was worried about the waves and the water and the thunder and the lightning and the wind uh, but guess what jesus was in the same boat where there was water and wind and thunder and lightning come on uh, what is the slap over the sides. Jesus is getting just as red as the disciples was, but he was laying down. You know why? Because he knew who he was. So Peter said, I, it worked for the Lord. I'm just going to lay here because I know it's out of my hand. But I believe. And all of a sudden, it's what the Bible said. So get your sandals on. We fixing to go somewhere. That angel of the Lord, you see. You see, the angel that the Lord sent, I said that the door sent. They make their own entrance and they make their own exits because they're not playing to man's rules. Come on, somebody. So that angel smote Peter on the side. He said, it's a, to gird up your sandals there. Hallelujah. We fixed to get out of this place. Hallelujah. I said, sometimes it takes a while to understand and realize you're at the place now called to know. Right. Yeah. Glory to God. So they got up. The shackles fell off. The guards were still asleep. The, the, the first door, oh, listen, they went out and, and, and he followed the angel. And wist not, watch this, Peter wist not. He said he didn't know that if it was true, which was done by the angel or... <laughs> He thought, but he thought he saw a vision. Come on. When verse 10 said, when they were past the first and the second ward or the gates, they came unto the armed gate that leadeth into the city. I mean, this is the last gate they got to go through. And right there, when on the other side of that gate's freedom, glory to God. Oh, listen. When they got to that last gate into the city, which opened to them of yeah. his own accord. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah, they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he's fixing them. Come on, somebody. I said, when Peter come to himself, this is what he said. Now I know for an assurity. What? That the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Meaning, guess what? The devil sought to kill him, but God showed him good. Amen. I said the devil tried to stop. Hallelujah. What are God's men? From the, my God. Because you see, he doesn't become a threat now. He don't pray through. Acts chapter 2 has already happened. And Peter stands out there and says, Oh, hallelujah. Well, glory, many brethren. You remember that little sermon he preached? Oh, yeah. Glory to God. Listen, Psalms 143 and 8. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. All right. Listen to what the psalmist is writing to the Lord. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way. Therein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. 
calls me, Lord. Right. That's a good prayer you and I should pray Thank sometimes. You. Have you ever felt you just got like kind of turned around in the fog? Yeah. That you that that just uh, the things that were working now it seems like they've just come to a grind and halt. Yep. Uh, at times, if, if we honest tonight, can somebody testify that I, I've been praying and the Lord's been moving and all of a sudden I'm praying and I'm praying and it don't feel like my prayers even gets to the ceiling. Uh, nothing seems to work right. In fact, everything I touch blows up. And Anybody in here tonight? Uh, it it seems like now the hell is raised an assault against me and turned some yeah. of my, uh, even my own people against yeah. me. Come on, somebody. I want to tell you, listen, we all all going to get there if you've never been there. But that's the trials of your faith. Sometimes listen, sometimes God don't seek the hell hounds on you but he lets, he, he lets them get awful close. Come on. But he's going to be there. He's going to be a way that seemed to be no way. He's going to be. He'll stay you. Don't get, don't get so shook that you'll break and run. Don't wave the white flag of a surrender unto the enemy. No, sir, but you put both hands up in the air and surrender to the Lord and said, Lord, I'm here for the duration. If I last through this one, I'm going to be blessed to see you. If, I, if you hold me past this one, glory to God, one day I'll see you. Right. So persuaded to leave knowing to go back to thinking. Sunday morning testimony. Oh, I stand on the Lord's promises. Glory to God. The Lord delivered me. Hallelujah. And come Wednesday, you don't even know if you're saved or not. Oh, yeah. Come on. That's right. Come on. That's right. You went from knowing to thinking. Come on. Come on. You reverted back to thinking. When you should build your, build your pulpit on knowing. Right. Lord, I know. Yeah. Hallelujah. Them three Hebrew boys, they told, they told that old king, old king, you better know this now. Because I'm going to tell you something. We know. We know that our God can deliver us from this fiery furnace. Come on. We know he can. But if not, let it be known that we still not going to bow down to that word. Glory to God. We're going to hold our head up. We're going to shout glory. With a fire. We might be put in the fire. I know that God can extinguish the fire. But if he don't, I still know that God You can't think you got faith. Amen. All you need to know that you got as much as a grain of mustard seed. And use that. Amen. Name it. Listen. Name of the leper. He came to that place. Back in 2 Kings 5 and 15. He came to that place. He was wrong. Verse 11, son, I want to tell you, he was having an issue. Yes. He thought, he thought something. You know when somebody steps on your little thinking peel? You had this big big revelation because you see something getting in or one of them on that TV said. And all of a sudden, oh wow, that makes sense. But the problem about them one-liners or that trying to build a whole doctrine with one scripture, most of the time you can't back it up. All right. Oh, we see them y'all who's doing it all the time. They don't take dear God. They'll take three words out of, out, of, out of one part of the Bible and build a whole doctrine on it. Wow. Let me tell you, friend, there is a... If, in fact, if Jesus, He is beginning and end. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. I believe He was the beginning in Genesis 1 and He was the end of Revelation. Yeah. And He's everything in between. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. But man, I want to tell you... See, God can't be pushed in a corner and made to move. Amen. And you you could even fast 40 days and still not leverage God. That's right. Because that's why he's God. We're not. Daddy idiot. Kenneth Copeland, if you want to know his name. When he state when he said what he said. On a videotape, it was live when he said, I watched it through a videotape. He was staying home one day to cheer God up. 
God was depressed. That's what he said. But that ain't the worst part. He said God spoke to him. Kenneth, my son. Yes, God. He said, do you know the power of a twice dead man? And he said, well, I thought I did, but maybe I missed something. He said, yeah, Kenneth, you've got, you got to understand the power that you have. Do you know, Kenneth, that you, because you're twice dead, you could have went to Calvary and took the sins of all mankind. I believe hell is going to have a little spot for people like that. I hope I'm not getting on y'all's heroes. Not even the truth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Man, I want to tell you there's so much out there. Naaman. Not that he didn't want to know. But he had to come to that place, that crossroads. And the Lord's making it real plain through his prophet that if you're going to get what you come for, yeah. you're going to do it my way, not your way. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah. I said that's the difference between the flesh and the spirit right there. Uh -huh. that, that, that prophet didn't come out of the house. Uh, he didn't strike his hands. He didn't make a big hoodoo. He didn't sling gold dust or angel, or angel hair. Come on. No, no. He sent his servant out there. He said, hey, you in the leprosy, go down to the muddy Jordan, dip your body in that thing seven times, uh, and you will get your healing. Come on. Uh, that sounds like the God we serve right there. Uh, because God looks deeper than the inside outside. Uh, God looks into the heart. Glory to God. Uh, God knows what's really in there. Oh, yeah. He got mad. He got ready to leave. And then his own servant had more humility than he had. So he went and he dipped seven times. And I don't think he got his healing just because he turned that way and went that way. I don't believe he got a healing when he walked and stepped in the water. I think the healing come after the seven yes, dips. Yes, How do you know that, preacher? Because that's what the Word of God says. Seven times. Yes. Come on. You remember this same Elisha grabbed a hope of the king's hand when he put a bow in his hand? He said, open that window and shoot. And they give him, some, give him an arrow. He said, smite the ground. And the Bible said he didn't smite no more. And the prophet got on him. Oh, yeah. Why? Because, because God's trying to do something in the king and through the king. But the king just thought that that three would be enough. Mm -hmm. He said, if you would have just kept beating, if you would have beat all the bark off that arrow, if you would have knocked a hole in the ground, it would have benefited you more. It would have benefited Israel more. You would have had years and years and years of peace with no threat of an enemy coming to besiege you. But friend, again, a lot of times we just go by what we think. We yeah. do, sometimes even more danger. We go by what somebody else maybe come on now thinks. Uh, glory to God. Listen now, Naaman, Naaman the leper. He came to that place. Uh, and when we get down to Second Kings, now he got he listen to he listen. He got in the Jordan. He dipped seven times. He got his healing. Uh, and in Second Kings five uh, and fifteen, glory to God. Listen to what he says. Uh, and he returned into the man of God. Uh, he and all of his comrades. Company. And he came and he stood before the man of God and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, glory to God. I want to tell you, he went from a thinking to a knowing. Glory to God. It, it stomped on his pride, it tore down his arrogance, and he had to do it God's way. You and I here tonight's never going to. Some, some folks are so hard-headed. Yes. They get mad at the preacher, the singer. Huh? Uh -huh. You know the problem with hard-headed people? 
I'm not saying we got none here, but there's going to be people watching on the videos. Probably all the hard heads will be on the video. You know why? You know why people are so hard headed? Because they want to do it their way. I fought six hours with a little more the other day. Trying to stretch a belt that ain't going to go on that foot. <laughs> But I said, I'd get up and I'd, I'd look. i look from a different angle. I said, I'm exhaust all my energy. And the Lord said, that's what's wrong with you. It ain't going on there. The thing is an inch too short. Come on. So back to, back to town I went. Swapped this one for that one. Went back. Laid down. And just about as long as it took me to, to lay down and get there and put it on. Glory to God. I'm back up again. Woo! Huh? Come on, y'all. I want to tell you, sometimes we still, we try to kick against the brick. Come on. Oh, when that Damascus Road decision come to pass uh, with Saul of Tarsus. Uh, hallelujah. Help me, Brother John. I said, with Saul of Tarsus, uh, had a bag full uh, of decrees uh, to persecute people that they found this way. Uh, you know what this way is? Uh, that's knowing people. Uh, that's Jesus loving, Holy Ghost filled people that wants to do it Jesus way. Amen. The Lord, here I am. And boy, oh man. But God looked past that old, old Saul's heart and he knocked him right off that horse. Saul. Saul, why persecutest thou me? Is what the Lord said. Oh, wait a minute. Watch this. Watch this. There's an identification happening. Called Saul of Tarsus, that would become the Apostle Paul. Said, "Who art thou, Lord? Yeah, come on. Huh? That I may know you. Right, right. Yes. Yeah. That I may serve you. Yes, Lord, Lord. Yes. You see, every person that's ever been born has been born with a seed of faith. Yeah. That might lay dormant for all their lives, Thank you, but on that Damascus road, mm -hmm. Saul got delivered of Saul. Uh, yeah. He went." He's blind as a bat. They take him into a house on a street called Straight. And they're going to, the Holy Ghost say Ananias. And not the Ananias and his wife that tried to lie to the Holy Ghost. That didn't work out either. They just thought they could get away with it. They should have knew better than that. But this is another one. He's heard of how wicked Saul, how, many, how much persecution Saul of Tarshish. And now, God, you want me to go lay. Not only do I want you to lay hands and pray for me, I want you to call him brother. Come on. Come on. Old things pass away, behold, yeah. all things become new. How dare us? If one, of the, if one of the meanest people in this neighborhood would walk through, bust through, the, kick the door down, trying to get to the altar to give their heart to yes, Jesus. Sir. Come on. If not careful, we'd be more we'd be more concerned with he busted the door than he give his heart to the Lord. And old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. Understand the first don't happen if the last is not fulfilled. Old things will pass away. But you've got to do your part. Now Naaman, he got tired. Of the hiding and, and living, let me tell you, friend. They they didn't put they didn't put his leprosy problem on the on the front page of the Sir, the Syrian newspaper. That was a very quiet, confidential thing that went on there. And it started from just a little servant guard. In fact, they call her a little maid. Don't even have a name there. Just a little maid. But he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Uh, this place might be a little hard to identify at first. But after a while, it becomes quite clear that the place that you might be in here tonight is the place called to know. When you're surrounded by trials, 
when you're in your hottest moment of suffering, when it seems like everything goes wrong, let me tell you, friend, your answer is the Lord. The blind man that Jesus healed in John 9 and 25, they accused him. Who was he? He can't heal. He's a blasphemer. He's a sinner. He's Beelzebub. All these things that them do, that religion, that's what religion would do. Amen. They cornered that man that was born blind. He's, he's got his sight now. Glory to God. Listen, they, they said, uh, who is he? Tell, tell us. He, he's a sinner. Say it. And this, this man that was born blind, he answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. But one thing I do know, that whereas I was blind, <laughs> now I see. Why don't you stand up and give the Lord a good praise right now? If that was you, one day we were all spiritually blind. We were born on this earth spiritually blind. But thank God the Lord passed by and extended his hand and you took a hold to his hand and he opened your eyes. Now I see. Come on. I know he lived. Well, I, I believe I'll read my last note. Now, Pop just said it. Job said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Yes, sir. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Ain't got not time just to think. Yes. You better know. Right. Some people call me hardcore. I don't believe it. But this is what I believe. And I'm going to say it again. To every young person, every old person, you can't effectively live for this Christ until you're willing to give your life for it. Am I going to go step in front of a bus? Absolutely not. My, day, my day's appointed. As yours. Yeah. But what I'm, I'm talking about tonight, you, all you, the best you can be is miserable. When you're trying to get one foot in, but you want to hang on to one foot out because there's some security that seems like the world offers you that the Lord don't offer you. Let, well, understand, you got your mind on the world, not God. Because he, Jesus tells us, don't store up our riches that the moth and the rust is going to get. That's right. I had that thought yesterday. I got sick and tired of buying those little one-gallon plastic spray things. <laughs> they wouldn't last I'd get home. I bought me a sure enough metal. The sprayer's metal. The tank's metal. Heavy duty. Bought it last year. Tickled to death. Cleaned it, put it up for the winter. Got it out yesterday. And went to put, put my stuff in. Started pumping and pumping and pumping and it wouldn't hold no air. <laughs> I took it apart. I looked where the base goes in and around the ring about this much, it's rustic. That you see it in ditching now. It's no seal. <laughs> And when I saw the rust, I looked straight up in heaven. I said, thank you, Lord. I know what you're talking about. Hallelujah. Then the Lord said, go get you some grease. It's going to be messy. But if you still want that thing to connect, uh, put some grease on that inner ring there. Uh, put, your, put it back down. Pump it up again. She's working like a brand new one again. Glory to God. But when I said all that to say this, uh, my Lord, nothing's going to last down here. It's all going to go to the rust. Uh, it's all going to go to the fowls of the air. It's all going to deteriorate. It's all going to deteriorate. Every bit of it. But there's an eternal promise here tonight that you would make your calling and election sure. Yes. No time to think. You better know. No time to think. You better know. And I wonder tonight if there's any 
You might have been going to church. Mama, look at that boy right there. You're so proud of that boy. Raised him under a Pentecostal church. We've had a talk before. And we both come to the same agreement. That if you was raised under a church pew or raised in a bar room, you still had to get saved the same way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And that's something you don't think you know, right? Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. You can sing world music. You can sing gospel music. But if you're going to get born again, right. you've got to come the same yeah. way. Right. And it's amazing grace. Glory yeah. to God. Hallelujah. If there's one here tonight, you in church, you faithful, committed, but you've not done the one thing. Works ain't the one thing. It's your heart. You've given him your head, you've given him you give him a little bit of you, but you ain't learned to lay your life down as a sacrifice. Paul calls it a reasonable service in the book of Romans. This life is not our own. We've been bought with a price. And I want to tell you, I've said this a hundred times. I guess this might be a hundred more tonight. But the most miserable people in the world is not them rank sinners out there. It's people that just can't make up their mind if they're going to just think or they're going to come to know. To get that other foot, drag that other foot out of the world and get it up here on that line. They sang that song tonight. Oh, I see the Lord. Yes. He's high and lifted up. And the question in Isaiah chapter 6, who shall go for us? Yes. Will you go for him? Yes. Will you live for him? Yes. Will you live for him every moment of every day? Will you tell the story? Nobody can tell your testimony like yourself. But you listen, your testimony's gotta it's gotta line up. Listen, you got saved 28 years ago, and for the first years you were doing good, but but if you slacked off a little bit, if you lost some ground, huh? Oh no, no, we're not kicking you while you're down. We're here to lift you up and help you to get your back plugged in to where you was at. It's time to make up some lost ground. It's time to let God be all to be the servant of the Most High God. You can't just sit around and think about it. you got to know it. And if you know it, you will do it. Somebody say amen. Yeah. So I wonder, would we get out of our seats tonight? Would we find a place to pray and say, Lord, I know. And I'm not backing up. And I'm not backing down. And I'm not sitting down. And I'm not getting out. I'm going, to, I'm going ahead. I'm going forward, Lord, for the things of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. And we thank you. Glorify you, oh God. Who you are, Lord. For who you are. Let us not take our eyes off of you, Lord. But let us look into Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith. We honor you. We love you. We praise you, Lord. 